going to be doing uh, after the show today, my taxes, and I am dreading it. Of course, tax day is this week, April 15th, one of the most hated days of the entire year. So if you're planning on filing your federal income taxes in just the next couple of days, you're not alone. You're in good company. There's a lot of procrastinators out there because about a quarter of all returns are mailed in last minute. Let's bring in one of our experts, our financial expert and CPA, Gene Marks of the Marks Group, is here now with us this morning. So Gene, good morning to you. Hey, Karen. How are you? Really good. I want to hit three things that affect a lot of our viewers. Let's first start with the child care tax credit. Let's start with the tweet. This is what uh, I, Lana writes in. Sure. Paid 12000 bucks in child care and got 600 back mm. in her tax credit. Nobody better say anything about having any more children. Uh, not often as much as people may expect. What can we do with our child tax credit? Yeah, it's really, and by the way, Karen, um, the, the biggest point that you want to make going into this is that we're, we're here in April right now. So we're talking about 2015, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just filing our returns now for last year. So this is all about to do with this coming year. And when you bring up the child care tax credit, uh, you know, the, the person who tweeted was absolutely right. The credit can be anywhere between $600 to $1,050. But really, if you're making more than $43,000 a year, it really starts going down. So that's really what happens is that for people that are over that income level, um, the credit gets smaller and smaller. Uh, the good news is, though, is that no matter how much money you make, you can still apply and get that credit as well. So it'll just probably be somewhere around that $600 level. Remember also for child care tax credit, that's a credit, so it goes against the taxes that you owe. And also you need to have at least $3,000 worth of child care expenses because the credit is just a calculation. It's a percentage of those expenses. I hope that helps. Now, how about home office deductions. Mm. A lot of people are working out of their houses. They're trying to take, you know, credits off of their, you know, printer, the stuff that they use in the house, some of their, you know, technology sure. lines. So what should people be doing there? Sure. So, so Karen, like in, in your situation, if, if your employer, Fox 29, says, hey, Karen, we really want you to be working from home or it's a requirement for work. We want you to be able to answer questions or do that kind of stuff. Then you've got the basis for taking a home office deduction. Just two years ago, the IRS, they, they simplified the rules around the home office deduction, which really allows you to just do like sort of a flat calculation. And the calculation is pretty easy. You can take just up to 300 square feet of your house, multiply it times five bucks a square foot. It's a $1,500 deduction and boom, that's what your deduction is. Now, if you think your home office is, is bigger than that and you wanna just do it based on actual expenses, like literally take the percentage of the home office about the whole house and your utility bills and all that, you can do that too. But a lot of people, they just have a simple home office dedicated to work for their employer. Um, just take that simplified calculation it's a lot easier to do, um, and I know a lot of clients are taking advantage of that. That is a great one. How about tax breaks on education? A lot of us are trying to, you know, further our knowledge so yeah. we can maybe get a better job come the future. What can we be taking there? So two big things, right? This year, for example, um, there's the American Opportunity Tax Credit, and what that is, it's a $2,500 tax credit that you can claim um, for tuition expenses that you're paying, not room and board, but it's tuition expenses. You have to be making uh, $90,000 or less, and pretty much be on your own, but you can you can work for that. The best thing about that tax credit, Karen, is that if you have those tuition expenses, even if you pay no taxes at all, you can still apply for that credit and get at least a thousand bucks for that. So that's a really good credit you should look into, the American Opportunity Tax Credit. If you have student loans, mm -hmm. you want to deduct your interest as well. It's about $2,500 a year. You can deduct an interest. Again, you know, it's up to a certain level of income you can have, about $80,000 a year, but uh, deduct that interest because it's really important. Uh, to make sure you get all the maximum return you can for your taxes. I got this question from Kathleen. She writes in all education expenses like textbooks on my mm. tax return if my studies are not related to my employment now. Yeah, you absolutely can. And again, I don't want to speak for her specifically because I don't know her exact situation. But the answer is yeah. I mean, this kind of a, a expense, this is, applies towards that tuition credit that I talked about before, the American Opportunity Tax Credit. If you're paying tuition and then you also want to include in that also textbooks as well, you can do that too and apply for that credit. So she may be able to take advantage of that. All right, Jean, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We all appreciate it. We all can use some extra advice and ways to find some more money. Thank you. Sure thing, Karen. See ya. All right. Coming up next, uh, what's ahead, Bill? Yeah, people tired of cleaning up after their dog. Are you tired of cleaning up after your dogs? Those accidents may be annoying, but there are some things you can do to make sure Fido takes care of his business outside. That's coming up next.